Get ready for some bone crushing hell raising. Maximum exposure is the only place you'll see a game of catch at 180 miles an hour. Bungee cord? We don't need no stinking bungee cord. Bikers catch some serious air. And women wake up and smell the seawater. A skier takes the quick way down. A climber takes the slow way up. A boarder surfs the sky. And high flying hot dogs. You'll be crawling back for more. Oh yeah, we got ESP on Extreme Sports Psychos. So, would you get in a tiny airplane with these bozos? Well, yeah, if you were a skydiver with serious skills, looking for some new thrills. Hey, you know that saying, give a bunch of guys a ball and you got a game? Well, this one's called Space Game. You jump out of a plane with your buds straight down. Then you throw a special weighted tennis ball to your teammates and you get points for catches. Just a regular game of catch with the catch. You're dropping out of the sky at 180 miles an hour, upside down. Now wait, freeze for a second. Yo, where's the Earth? What's up with that plane? What's down? Am I gonna live or what? Okay, let's crank up the audio. Now, that's the wind rushing by. Either that or it's your brain screaming. Man, this is one cool sport. fun tossing this ball around a couple of miles above the earth but sooner or later you got to remember to open the chute or else you'll end up a stain on some guy's driveway oh yeah that's it just glide on in total up your score and you know you're cool <laughs> this new sport comes out of germany land of extreme sports psychos it's called scad jumping. Now compared to this, bungee jumping's for pussycats. You free fall from a crane. No parachute, no bungee cord, just a net. You have to wear a helmet and pads for protection. But then it's ice. Swai. Dry. Geronimo! Look like fun? Well, let's slow it down. Now that's a scream of pure enjoyment. But that's not enough for this guy, Bernhard Schneider. He calls himself an extreme sportsman. We think he just wants attention. Okay, he's gonna jump from this cliff into a net that's dangling from a helicopter. He has to hurl himself far enough off the cliff so his body isn't dashed on the rocks below. He tests the wind and waits for the exact moment to jump. The German leaps. Oh, the humanity! Nothing but net! Hey, let's look at that again. Note the fierce concentration. The animal grace. The sheer stupidity. Oh, yeah. Scad jumping. Coming soon to a mountain near you. Why do extreme sports psycho bikers jump over the hill? Well, because it's there. This bike club, the crusty demons of dirt, attack the California desert with a motorcycle vengeance. They're so hard up for thrills, they'll ride just about anything. But when they want to get away from it all, it's time for a road trip. They hop a jet and a chopper to the perfect place, sunny South Africa. Where the riding is hard, 
The sand dunes are soft, and the flying is easy. aren't always a perfect 10. Yeah, but who cares when you can do this? Hey, see you later. Well, watch out for that sand burn. It's hard to start a new sport, but these women are doing it. Let's look at that again. Nothing like your head bouncing off the hard surface of a lake. Now they're catching some air. This is wakeboarding, a sport where the top competitors are women. display a gymnast grace and strength as they sky over the wakes. Hey, let's take a closer look. And if you don't think this sport requires strength, check out her arms and legs. Oh yeah, she's definitely working her ESP. Coming at you next on Maximum Exposure. Why did the psycho dude jump off the mountain? Because it was there. Make a wish. Hey, if you can't walk on water, drive on it. We also got chick on a stick. Why are you stopping? And water skiing with no boat. Women bomb off a cliff. And if you think that's sweet, peep our Max X list of extreme sports psychos. Get your butt back to Max X. High five! Maximum exposure, back with a vengeance. Here's a psycho jock that'll do anything for adrenaline. Dave Barlia plans to ski off the top of Mount Asgard in the Arctic Circle. Now this thing is nearly a half mile high of cold hard granite. It looks like one giant tombstone just waiting for Dave's name. Dave, of course, sees it differently. We flew over this thing and everyone's jaw just dropped because this was just this huge, about 2,200 feet sheer cliff. And uh, just out in the middle of nowhere and just so cool looking. Dave packs his chute and hits the slopes for a few practice jumps without skis. Now, one concern is jumping far enough so he doesn't slam into the cliff. Check out how long he waits before opening his chute. He has about nine or 10 seconds before he needs to. Dave waits until the very last moment. No more practices. Time for the real thing. He has on his skis, and he's heading for the ultimate black diamond run of his life. Dave has fallen for 10 seconds and still hasn't opened his chute. Has he pushed it too far? Let's go back and see just how long Dave is going to push this jump. We'll count it down. Okay, there he goes. Seven seconds. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Again from another angle. Notice a few seconds into the jump, Dave's skis come off. Eight seconds. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The chute finally opens. Dave makes it. Big celebration? No way. Dude has ice water in his veins. I was going fast enough down the slope where these skis would just project me away from the cliff, and I had no worries about hitting this cliff at all. So it was just 
so fun for me to do. Okay, all you water skiers, which one of these guys looks like a human tow rope? Chuck, Buddy, or Dan? Well, let's find out. Oh, by the way, these guys don't need skis. They're barefooters, skin to surf. The boat's doing 50 miles an hour. Dan's the first to climb out. If you guessed he's the human tow rope, you're right. Chuck grabs one leg, Buddy grabs the other. Okay, let's make a wish. No foot breaks on this ride. You let go and it's the old sliding enema stop. Works every time. Again in slow motion. This takes incredible strength. Dan not only has to support his own weight, but the weight of two water ski lunatics. Okay, here's one last look at these psychos cutting up the lake. Okay, Dan, do that back thing one more time. Finally, a psycho sport barrier tumbles down, and a new age dawns. I mean, they finally let women do this, and this is something I saw when I was five years old, and I said, wow, these people are nuts. And now it's, I'm the one up here who's being nuts, and I love doing it. I love being up high in the air. All they need is a skin-tight suit, amazing skills, and a lot of guts. And they're in the first ever women's cliff diving competition in Acapulco. Finally, the God-given right to be as dumb as guys. Jocks on rocks, plunging themselves into the swirling ocean, flirting with death on every dive. Here's the dive that made Heidi Pasco queen of the hill. Here's a slow motion look at that championship plunge. Grace, beauty, and guts under pressure. Heidi went home 6,000 bucks richer. Not a lot of cash for risking your life. But for Heidi, it's a giant leap for womankind. Wow, these people are nuts. Bonjour. This is a very sad love story. This abnegate man is world-class water skier Florent Carmen. Why is he so sad? Gigi, his lover, has left him and thrown all his filthy clothes into the desert. Take your filthy clothes and prove you love me, she say. His heart is broken. What to do? The idea come. He will ski on his feet across the desert, across the canal, pulled by a helicopter, and Gigi will take him back. It begins. Will he make it? We or no? Florent is traveling 120 kilometers an hour. His tennis shoes are melting to his feet. They are stinking like a wet chain. That is dog in French. Gigi looked down from the helicopter and say, I hope you fall and break the bone of your collar. So he do. But the broken bone does not stop him. His love is too strong. He begin again. Again, his feet are roasting like two delicious escargot. Oh, that is snail in French. But he reaches the canal just before they are melted and finally washes his stinking feet in the canal. Then, Florent begins to think again. I am such a stud for doing this. What do I need with that Gigi? And now, the heart of Gigi has broken. Fiend. Though that is the end in French. ESP. In your face on Max X. Surfing the webs for whips. Try surfing the sky. Ski jumpers flip out. Mud puppies in the house. A guy who's so psycho, he's called a Spider-Man. And the perfect Max X Psycho Sport. And if you're drooling for more, check out our Max X list of extreme sports psychos. Oh yeah, there's more coming. <laughs> We're back with maximum exposure. The coolest extreme psycho sport just may be sky surfing. Troy Hartman's one of the best in the sport. 
He makes it look easy. When you're falling at 120 miles per hour, it's like a huge rudder. And all it wants to do is throw you around, spin you, flip you upside down. And its natural tendency is to put you underneath it, inverted, uh, like a rotor blade on a helicopter. That's a stable position. Unfortunately, that's not the stable position for opening your parachute. So, is it the coolest sport ever? Just watch. He straps on a helmet cam so we can get a Troy eye view of his sky tricks. The forces that are created from those moves spinning so fast have actually blown out the blood vessels in my eyes and stretched out the capillaries in my hands to the point where it's burning and I can't tolerate it any longer. You also have to stay oriented the whole time because everything's upside down now. You know, you're looking up at ground and down at sky. It's awesome especially when you're out there with a cameraman and you start tracking, flying straight at him. You can get closing speeds well over 100 miles per hour and you just zoom by them faster than you could ever go legally in a car. With this shot from a helicopter, you can see that sucker's moving. It's so neat because uh, this helicopter can get so close to us in free fall and it looks as if we're going to run into the ground or hit a car on the freeway or hit power lines. They pull their chutes just a few hundred feet from the ground. From this angle, it looks like they're too close. But this guy knows what he's doing. We're definitely not daredevils. We're not stupid. Um, I have a college degree, for instance, in aeronautical engineering, so I have a real good understanding of the aerodynamics of what I'm doing. My biggest fear, and I have had one close call with this, is having one binding come undone. And if you don't get the board cut away real quick and have that other foot released, it can break your ankle real fast. I didn't know if I wanted to do this sport, and I was scared to death of it. I couldn't imagine what it would be like now to be a non-skydiver. Troy may be the ultimate extreme sports psycho. There's a whole lot of ESP going on here. These freestyle skiers are bombing down a ski jump in Park City, Utah. They got everything but the snow. You see, they don't need it because this is water rim. It's all about skying high and looking good. This is how the U.S. ski team gets in their reps in the off-season. A 70-degree slope launches them extra high, 60 feet in the air, so they can get crazy coming up with new jumping routines. And since they land in the pool, they don't have to worry about going splat on the ground. You get all kinds of combinations, even a hot dog and menage a trois. Once you're in the air, it's not that bad. I used to get up there and I'd be like, staring down and everyone's looking at you because you're you're 20 feet higher up the interim than everyone else is and they're like what's he doing up there and then and you're thinking about that but now it's just hit your takeoff and go watch this he's gonna try a quadruple backflip it's never been done oh yeah he sticks it count them one two three and four. That was a huge jump, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we got no snow, but we got the H2O. This is Corey Rackler. He invented his own extreme psycho sport. No boat, no problem. This guy ain't no kite flying Charlie Brown. He invented kite skiing. his father attached a handlebar with a 500 pound line to a kite 
He lets out the line, and then he squeezes his mounted mountain bike disc brake. Sure, it takes him way faster than any boat could. But the best thing is the jumping. Hey, I can fly! I can fly! Well, for a little while, maybe. But even when Corey crashes, it's easy for him to get back up. So if you can't find a sport you're into, you can always do what Corey did. Invent your own. The French have their own brand of extreme sports psychos. Elaine Robert is about to get arrested. Psycho sports come easy to some people, especially the French. Elaine Robert wants to climb this 36-story sucker in Montreal. Now, the thing is, it's so illegal. They call Elaine the French Spider-Man. He's got no cables, no safety harness, no net. All he's got's a bag of chalk and a dream. And cameras all around him. Yeah, he didn't just wake up this morning and say, I'm gonna shimmy up a building. He planned it, in secret. Because, well, like we said, it's illegal. Elaine is definitely a frog because his fingers seem to have suction cups. You gotta wonder, why doesn't he just use an elevator? Maybe his elevator doesn't go to the top floor. Is he trying to draw more attention to himself? Hey, look at me! Yo, Elaine, we noticed, huh? And so did the cops. Because it's illegal. What if you were pushing papers in your office on the 20th floor and you turned around to see some French guy just sliming up your window? Elaine celebrates the greatest French victory since... Well, the last great French victory. The cops can't wait to haul him off to jail. Now, we don't speak French, but I think he's saying... We got more psychos on maximum exposure. Here's mud in your eye and your butt. Set them up, blow them away. When we say off-road vehicle, we mean off-road. And companies buy new ways to downsize. For more extreme romping and psycho stopping, it's our Max X list of extreme sports psychos. Like it or just love it, Max X will be back. Maximum exposure. Give it to me. It ain't easy to invent a new psycho sport. I'm gonna call this one water cross. What do you think of that name? Sounds really stupid to us. But what do you expect from a guy who whacked the snowboard in half, bolted it to his ATV, and thinks he can ride it across Lake Mead in Nevada? Considering the danger, he's probably taken great care to create some special safety setups. Isn't that right, Steve? Like I know special setups. I've never done this before. Sounds like another graduate of stupid stunt school. I'm actually kind of getting nervous about this. <laughs> she got to love a man who's in touch with his feelings. Just say a good prayer. Now it's time to get in touch with his psycho side. Steve guns the engine. And there he goes. What across attempt number one. Bust. Yeah, but not in Steve's mind. Yeah. High five. High five. Yeah, high five, Steve. What do you say you try again, champ? Water across the tap number two. Bust. High five. High five. High five, Steve. <laughs> now, you got to have at least one more in you, Mr. Record Breaker. Steve, are you scared? Yeah. And not scared enough. He's going to try again. <laughs> Maybe three will be a charm. Yeah, bad luck charm. Water cross attempt number three. Bust. High five. High five. High five, Steve. 
See you at the finish line someday. <laughs> Want to get on maximum exposure? Well, get yourself a shotgun and a mullet. That's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> These folks in Mequon, Wisconsin have the right idea. It's shotgun bowling. Did I? They look at you like, you know, they, they, don't, they don't believe it. It's like, you, you, you set the pins up and you shoot them just like in bowling? Yeah. <laughs> A strike's a strike, and a spare's a spare. But you gotta do it from 50 yards out. They even hire a kid to be the pin setter. This is not fun. They shoot the pins down. We have to run down there and put them in the circles and run back. Safety's a major concern, because you don't want to lose one of your cute little pin boys. So what was Joe's inspiration for shotgun bowling? Aggravation at the local bowling alley. Just uh, not being able to pick up the 10-pin when you want to. Come home, set them up, shoot at them. Nice nails. Lousy aim. And to give the game an extra challenge, these two guys get to sit behind you and bust your chops every time you miss a shot. There's no home field advantage in this sport. Very tough throw. <laughs> People wear earplugs not for the noise of the gun, but to keep out the commentaries from the people behind them. Bowling with buckshot is a blast. It may never replace cockfighting as America's national pastime, but it's still better than soccer. This is one extreme psycho sport. Having fun. It's pain. Pain and more pain. This is called the high tech adventure race. Good job. Good job. The main events are 10 miles of brutal mountain biking, 7 miles of brutal mountain running, and what else? An hour of brutal canoeing in the dark. But that's not nearly enough pain. Bring in the Marines to think of other ways to torture contestants. Like this crawling through the mud. Or this. Climbing through an obstacle course. Or this, carrying a teammate on a two by four. Why are you stopping? But this ain't only about muscle and stamina. You also need brains. Just when you're thoroughly wiped out, there's the memorization test. A piece of gum, three, three candy corns. What better way to enjoy this race than through the eyes of a team called the Sissy Girls? Here's the torture cam. Get ready to rumble. Oh, yeah, we're ready. <laughs> They're off! The first event is the 2x4 carry, or chick on a stick. Off they go. Once that's done, it's the pits. Nothing like a refreshing mud bath before heading out on a nighttime race through the mountains. The sissy girls look dead tired as they stumble their way through the obstacle course and nearly drown themselves in the canoes. But these women pull it all together for the last event. Scaling a 20 foot wall. All that's left is a mad scramble across the finish line. Sissy girls? <laughs> I don't think so. This is called grinding. Boarders ride on any surface they can find. Hey, grind this, buddy. Yo! This is a new psycho sport. Soaping. It's grinding without the skateboard. Specially designed shoes with built-in padded insoles let you do some fancy footwork. Oh yeah, this ain't for tenderfoots. It's blistering action. Same great pleasure as skateboard grinding and some of the same great pain. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, my gosh. I'm okay. Max X is coming back with more extreme psychos. My, what a big lance you have. Men run downhill, go boom. And Italy launches its new space probe. 
And if you're not overstimulated, drink in our Max X list of extreme sports psychos. Maximum exposure. We got your back. Ah, didn't even build. You're back with Maximum Exposure. England, known for its noble history, its fine literature, and its stupid pastimes. There's a big crowd of extreme sports psycho wannabes on hand for the annual cheese rolling contest. The rules are simple. Drunks raise cheese. Let's get to the action. There goes the cheese. These lads have to race the rolling round of cheese to the finish line. Now the slope is so steep it's hard to keep your footing. Oh, this guy's doing well. Oh, unlucky bloke. Let's go to the instant replay. But these men are fearless warriors. Just rolled and rolled. Rolled and Awesome. Years of hard work have brought this man to this moment. He must be so proud. Yet another new sport in England. No, it's not blowing up a colorful floaty thing. It's human foosball. These folks aren't extreme sports psychos. They're seasoned veterans of many a pub game. They're strapped onto the bars. Then the ref gives the rules. No handballing, no heading. Winning teams, obviously the team with the most goals. Ready? Get the Play ball. Don't head the in. game lasts six minutes, but we'll spare you. It's just too stupid. The action is fast and furious. Manchester United is making a run. They break through the defense and go! Let's review that on our instant replay. Oh, that kind of sucked. Human foosball. Another sport for people with too much time and too much beer. Although identified as such, the individuals in the following video are not actually celebrities or members of the British royal family. They are, in fact, just a bunch of morons. Extreme Sports Psychos, direct from Leicestershire, England. It's the Celebrity Catapult Championships. This year, they're aiming away from the nuclear cooling towers after last year's incident. The first contestant is Prince Charles. Let's see that again. Next up, Ginger Spice. Here goes the lovely Catherine Zeta-Jones. Next to be launched is two-time Oscar winner Michael Caine. Finally, it's Queen Elizabeth II. She loves a good catapult. Once more. Yo, Queen, you rock! And now we move on to another benighted place, Texas. Watch this, especially if you hate those losers from the Renaissance Fair. Taking a cue from their benighted brothers in England, these Texans get medieval on each other. It's jousting for dollars. Back in the day, a lot of folks got hurt doing this. Hey, come on, let's bring it back. King Arthur's Kevlar is 50 pounds of stainless steel, and that doesn't include the codpiece. Boom! That boy takes one in the face. I'll bet that hurt. Hey, how about another? Bam! Hey, let's slow it down and savor it. Oh, Sir Lancelot here is going, man, this sucks. I'm going to go play the loot. Hey, there's more where that came from. Maximum Exposure's coming back. Slinging our Max X list of extreme sports psychos.
maximum exposure. It's X-List time. Our picks for the ultimate extreme sport psychos. Number three. If you're a wave worshiper, you celebrate Biggest Wednesday. The day Maui got rocked by some of the largest waves ever seen. 50 foot walls of water. To a psycho surfer, that can mean only one thing. Hit the beaches and hit them hard. These monsters had surfers facing death with every ride. It was almost like a cartoon on how small he was on the size of that, that wall, that face of a wave. This beach is called Jaws, because these killer waves will swallow you whole. Forget about paddling onto them. The only way to catch one is to be towed out by a jet ski. The surfers dropped off, and the jet ski races to shore. They always make it back without a problem, but not on Biggest Wednesday. Today, nothing is safe in the water. That machine can outrun anything we've ever encountered before. You just keep going out in front of it and around. Before. <laughs> I kept looking at this wave, and uh, I realized that it was getting closer, you know? Instead of further away, I just thought, oh my god, this thing, I think it's going to get me. The next thing I knew, the white waters engulfed me. I turn around to see this purple seat, which is the seat of our jet ski. And uh, then I knew that Tony had been uh, mowed down. That tiny speck right there is Tony on his jet ski. He's completely chewed up by the crushing surf. Somehow he survived. These dudes are some serious extreme sports psychos. And number two on our X list. A story of courage unlike any other as two women triathletes push themselves to the edge just to come in fourth place. It's the Hawaii Ironman competition. A triathlon event consisting of a two and a half mile swim, a 112 mile bicycle race, and a 26 mile marathon all in the same day. It's the ultimate test of endurance. Wendy Ingraham and Sean Welch have been battling it out all day. They've covered 130 miles, and there's less than 100 feet to go when their bodies suddenly say, no more. They start shutting down. They're completely spent and wasted. They have the will of champions, but the bodies of Gumby. These are world-class athletes, pushing themselves beyond the limits. Fighters determined to cross the finish line even if it kills them. I had nothing left in my body to, to get me there. I think it was just 100% will getting to the finish line at that point. My whole body started to fall apart on me. Sean was out in front, but Wendy was closing in. I had cramps in my legs so bad. I was just praying that I could take that next step to get closer to the line. With less than 50 feet to go, Sean went crashing down and took Wendy with her. When I took that side step to avoid Sean, that was enough to throw me off and I fell down. And I was just like, okay, think fast, try to get up. And I couldn't do it. And I'm like, okay, crawl. We both fell about the same point in the race. And we got up at the same time, and then we both fell again. It was amazing. Then I tried to get up once more, and Wendy had the bright idea of just crawling, not getting up and trying to run. It became a crawl to the finish, with Wendy crossing first. Uh, after I crossed the line, I'm like, the race is over. Now I can let my compassion roll out. She's my friend, and I wanted to help her across. She was just holding her hands out to me and willing me to the, the finish line. And as soon as I touched the finish line, I kind of just passed out and um, laid down. It touched me how um, my fiercest competitor that day was, was my best friend, too. I will do Ironman again. It's the pinnacle. Two of the toughest and gutsiest extreme sports psychos you'll ever see. And number one on our X list, the ultimate adventurer who paid the ultimate price, Dan Osmond. He thought of himself as invincible. He died doing what he does best. Here Dan is attempting to do something never done before. Climb the face of a rushing waterfall using no ropes, no safety devices. 
Armed with only two tiny ice picks, it's Dan Osmond versus a thundering wall of freezing water. Man versus the brutal forces of nature. Let's see who wins this mismatch. Dan claims victory, but another more extreme challenge awaits this extreme athlete. This is x Material Supreme. Dan Osman is one of the world's best free climbers. Free as in no ropes, no safety harnesses. Equipment, his hands and feet. And what I'm doing is what you call hand jams, where you stick your hand in flat and you make a cup like this so that you get pressure on each side of the crack and you're expanding your hand in there to give yourself a hold. Today, he's scaling the sheer wall of a 200 foot tall rock in California's Joshua Tree National Monument. 90 degrees straight up. Dan agreed to carry a camera. This is the first time I've climbed with a helmet cam. The images are raw and terrifying. This is the climb through the eyes and words of Dan Osman. Some of his last words ever recorded on tape. I've always sort of gotten off on scaring myself a little bit, you know. Sometimes I just get really comfortable, like zero fear. I feel so comfortable that I just kind of look down and go, okay. We've got to kind of get a little fear going so we can be a little bit more awake. But in a jam, I could actually hang longer in a hand crack by one hand. It's kind of odd how that works. I had a very close call once. I mean, where the crack pinches off, where you can only get your tip to your fingers in like this. And I looked down, and next thing I know, I realized, hey, I'm 100 feet off the ground here, and my tips are coming out, and I'm just thinking, ah. And so I could feel my arms petering out and my feet starting to shake. And I just had to shoot for the hold and grab the top and get up there and freaked out. And basically what I realized is that you have to know absolutely for sure that you can get to the top without, you know, coming across that kind of a situation. Dan has reached the top. He must now climb back down. I think about, well, when I get older, maybe my body won't be able to keep up with it. Eventually I'm going to have to stop. That'll be a day of great satisfaction, actually, because I'll know that I've done everything that I've wanted to do, and now it's time to do other things. Dan never lived to see that day. Eight months after making this climb, Dan died while attempting to set a new record in the extreme sport of cliff diving. His safety rope snapped while leaping off an 1,100-foot mountain in Yosemite National Park. Dan Osman, the ultimate extreme athlete, maximum exposure.